Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing the new Battle Rush Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which we have just 8 seconds to take our turn and 15 seconds to choose our cards in between rounds. That means it is all about the speed, and that is what this deck is designed to do. So let's go give it a look. So today we'll be playing a Northern Realms Shield Wall deck that focuses on creating as many shields as possible, and then at the end of the round, using Rogner to remove all those shields and get a huge boost as our finisher. So that's really all that the deck is about. You're just getting those shields early and getting as many as possible and then either playing Rodner directly or using Royal Decree or Amphibious Assault to get him because he does cost lower than 9 provisions, so it's possible to tutor him in with both of those cards. And then we can use Renew in round 2 or round 3 to replay Rodner at the end of the round so we get our key finisher twice. So that's really all there is to it. Outside of that, it's all about either playing bronze units that have shields or using some gold cards that help us get additional copies of those bronze units that have shields, like Queen Adalia here. Donmir, our defender, we technically don't have that many engines. I mean, you could put him in the melee row to help protect Rogner, because Rogner is Rolox the melee row. Make a point of uh, playing him there. But uh, if you don't have last say and you're concerned that your opponent might have some kind of tall removal, then maybe you play Donmir in the melee row to help protect Rogner. Otherwise, we have... Some engines, not many, so, I mean, Donomir is mostly just here because he happens to have a shield, and, I mean, Defender is, is nice, sometimes. A little bit of thinning with Roach, and uh, Nickers as well, so we have a greater probability of drawing into the cards that we actually want to be playing. And then, Vandegrift, a little bit of resilience, which is another useful thing to have when maybe you have Rogner, but you don't have Renew, so you can only guarantee that you'll get Rogner once. That way you can kind of bail yourself out with a maybe not quite as strong uh, round one if you're just holding on to Rogner for round two or round three and just, you know, basically lean on having this resilience bailing you out in a subsequent round. Then outside of that, we do have some engines. Not a ton, but some. With Anastranger and with Windhelm. So Windhelm, probably going to be a card that when you have him, you're going to want to play on your first turn because the longer that he has the shield, the more he will get boosted and two boosts per turn. If he does lose his shield, then we have other ways to get that boost back, including but not limited to using our leader ability. And then Anna Strager that we were looking at a minute ago is another card that you're going to want to play early as well because uh, she is one of your other engines and also a solid target for your leader ability to get her boosted up so that she's inspired and capable of boosting on both sides of her. So those are the two primary engines. Reinforcements, another way to get additional copies of bronze shielded units. Watchman is the first bronze shielded unit. We've talked about them a lot, but not only does it have a shield, it can also give a shield. So this could be uh, another way to get another shield back on Windhelm if he loses his starting shield. Or if you just have some units that don't have shields and you're trying to power up Rogner, you can do so by giving those units shields. So Anna Stranger, uh, Queen Adalia, or anything that happens to lose its shield to damage. Immortal Cavalry is one of the key cards, though, because not only does it have a shield, it spawns in a base copy of itself that also has a shield, so it's two shields in one card, which is really helpful. Then Wyvern Scale Shield, another way to either give a shield to a unit that doesn't start with one, or if something lost its shield, put it back on. Megascope to create additional copies of bronze units that have shields. Technically, Immortal Cavalry is not the preferred choice for that, because we would miss out on the deployability, whereas K20 Cavalry is because no deployability that we're missing out on by spawning it in we're still getting the additional value though when it loses its shield which of course when we use Rogner will trigger. Griffin Witcher Adept is another bronze unit that has a shield so it does have some synergies it's just for the most part a worse version of K20 Cavalry so if you have enough shielded units then you're probably gonna just mulligan this. And then Retaining Knight is our other engine that Again, play early in the round, and this way, technically speaking, between two Redanian Knights, Anna Stranger, and Windhelm, if you don't have Grogner, it is possible to win a round, still difficult, but it is a way to uh, bail yourself out if you, uh, for whatever reason, either don't have Grogner for a round, or maybe you have him, but you don't have Renew, so you can't rely on being able to replay him. So, that's a look at the deck, though. It is, of course, primarily about loading up on as many shields as possible and then using Rogner as a big finisher to get boost from those shields and replay Rogner with your Renew. One thing to note about this deck, it is, is rather matchup dependent uh, because uh, if your opponent removes all of your shields, then of course Rogner is 
not going to be able to get his big boost, which is unfortunate. On the other hand, if your opponent is relying entirely on damage and nothing else to generate points, then uh, they're not going to deal any damage to us. It might mean we have a worse finisher, but uh, we'll still have units on the board. So that can actually work in some situations. Other than that, uh, it is, of course, a deck that doesn't require too much clicking. So it is useful in this event for that reason, since uh, it means you're not going to be quite as rushed to get the job done. Just make sure key thing is that when you are playing Rogner, because he is row locked in the melee row, make sure that you play him quickly enough that your turn doesn't technically end and the game randomly chooses which row to play him in and he ends up in the range row. I have been there. I have done that. It's painful. So just make sure that when you are playing Rogner, you do it quickly. But there's look the deck. Now let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. Okay, so we have Rogner. That is, of course, our big deck-defining card, our big finisher. We'd like to have some good setup form, though. Generally, from which our depth is the worst of our shielded cards, so let's dump that if we can. And a Megascope, probably dump that as well. And a Stranger's good pickup. I think we'll start off with, where'd you go, Windhelm? There you are, because this is probably our best engine, and I do like that we're getting uh, Roach and Knickers, who happen to have gone in the same row here, which means Endestranger is probably coming up next, right in between these two, and we'll use Gates of the Mill. Uh, we would like to have Renew, is the one key card that we do not currently have in our hand that they could potentially mill. Let's go Endestranger, we'll use our stratagem on her to get her inspired, so she's boosting on both sides, that means we're getting two points per turn from you, and two points per turn from you as well. So even without Rogner, that's not bad, and given how they might end up milling Renew kind of soon here, that's probably... Something that we're going to have to... I mean, we could potentially lean almost exclusively on these engines here. Because Mill, of course, doesn't have many points. Is their downside. But uh, we are going to start running away with the round a bit here. And maybe if we take Vandergriff as well, that could be useful. Okay, Milling AA. He's a great card, of course, but tutors against Mill are generally not all that effective. The Resilience can, to a certain extent... Make up for the, the weakness of, or the strength of Mill, which is limiting the number of cards that we can draw into here. But they're going to give us an easy round one win here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're on nine cards. We have the carryover on Vandriff. I think we're, I mean, rule of thumb is to go for the 2-0 win against Mill. We do get the Renew, which is a bit of a backup plan. But uh, I think we'll dump you and dump you. Okay, could have been a little bit better. But we'll start off with Adalia into additional Immortal Cavalry. Because now it's all just about maximizing the number of shields. Do we have any engines? I don't really think we do. We did. We used basically all of our engines in round one here. Okay, that's going to be a little bit annoying. They're, uh, sure, they're not really going to deal much in the way of damage with their row effects because we have the shields to mitigate that damage, but it does limit the effectiveness of Rogner because the more shields we have, the more boosts he receives. Vilga Forts, I mean, on a five, no, six power unit. Okay, that is a little unfortunate that Rodanian Knight happens to go in the row where it can't really do anything, but I, I think we can live with that. Let's put the shield on Adalia, because she is currently shieldless. Oh, as are you. You might get destroyed, or damaged by the frost, but she was not going to. We should also use a Megascope somewhat soon. Technically speaking, K20 Cavalry is a slightly better target for those. Uh, again, we're not really taking much in the way of damage from the shields because we have the shields, which is nice. Uh, so in that way, their attempts to slow us down with damage are not very effective. It does limit the effectiveness, once again, of our finisher, but uh, it's not a huge deal if we're just outscoring them. So now that we have our preferred target to create a copy of, that's when we use Megascope, because uh, you don't get the extra copy of the Immortal Cavalry when you spawn them in with the Megascope, which is why technically it's better. Okay, that's... Wow. Uh, it might be the first time I've ever seen someone uh, heat wave a Megascope. We should also start using our shield wall charges pretty soon here, so we aren't rushed on our last turn. So renew? Okay, well, I mean, they've just given up, is what appears to be the case. So well, obviously, Rogner, I mean, I'll show you Rogner, oh, or I won't show you Rogner because they'll forfeit. All right, so going up against Northern Realms here, and they'll go first. Okay, no Rogner and no way to get him right now. No Renew either. We'll get rid of Roach and we'll get rid of Knickers. And uh, we got Renew. 
but we are looking for a win condition here in round one and uh, not really seeing one at the moment. So we might be looking to keep this really short and we can lead off the retaining night if we'd like. Although this might turn into just purely a throwaway round, in which case probably just thin out our Gryphon Witcher Adepts because those are probably the weakest of our units. So we will get some thinning out, some additional value as well from Knickers and potentially Roach if we do end up playing a gold card, but I don't think that we will. I mean, they're not... Not starting with anything particularly ambitious either. As this is looking like it might even be a neutral deck. But what are they up to here? It's looking like a neutral deck. Hmm. Hmm. Would have let off with Redanian Knight. If we are planning. On doing anything significant here, I mean, we can basically just remove that bleed, like so. Traveling Merchant, I mean, it's all neutral, so yeah, it's looking a whole lot like a, like a neutral deck. Also, that doesn't work in the melee row. Surprised that they used all leader ability charges and then played that in a row that does not have anything. So, strange as it is what they've been doing here, we still don't really have the means to punish them. To see some of that opportunity, because again, we just need Ragnar or some other engines other than a single Redanian Knight. Okay, still no Ragnar, but we have Anastranger, which is better than we could say about uh, round one. Uh, let's get rid of you and get 20 cavalry. We still. Where is Ragnar? <laughs> Shoop! Probably going for the resilience. I mean, we can match them almost, not quite as many base power on uh, on Vandegrift. I mean, we should probably start with uh, Retaining Knight. Also, uh, Lid's Grammar. Okay, Vandegrift does not have quite as much base power as Shoop Knight. I'm sorry, we were rushed. <laughs> okay, uh, let's now that we have a unit for Anastranger to boost. Uh, technically, I suppose we knew that Roach was going to come out because Anastrager was our first gold card that we played thus far. We didn't know if it was going to end up in the range row, but might have made sense. No, don't do that. I was considering going with Donamir first, but I was feeling a little bit greedy and I have been punished for my greed. I think what we'll do in that case, we'll reinforcements here. They do not have any engines at all right now. Mata, give a... Oh, no, we're not going to get... Uh, not going to get the card we're looking for here. No Rogner here. Although we could Megascope to get one more engine. And it is, it technically was a slow, slow pace play. And we probably should have still gone for something bigger. Although we do have technically still a card to burn. Okay. So at this point, take our chances on a slightly early Vandegrift. It's decent pace wise. And with our Three engines on the board here. It is enough. Gonna move? Yeah, should move one of those. For a second, I thought maybe Mandrick, but no, that doesn't really matter for them. Um, I guess. I mean, I'd like to save the cavalry of all these varieties and Donmir ideally as well, but uh, that might not be a luxury that we can afford to have. See, here's the thing, is that they still have not really played anything big. The problem is that we have no way to really punish them outside of double Redania Knight, which is continuing to carry us a bit here. Would have loved to have had this third one. Redania is not bad. That's probably the most threatening card we've seen them use thus far. No, don't mess with our Redania Knights. <laughs> we need those. Uh, I mean, I think we we are done mirroring here. In part because we don't have many cards remaining. And in part because... We need this Redanian Knight to stick around. Hey, Triss. You know what? Golden Froth is not bad. Uh, technically, if we're not using Ragnar, then Immortal Cavalry is a little bit better. We might need to play Renew in this, this round, which is going to be the Witcher Adept in that case. So we don't, fortunately at least. Okay, they're going to get rid of Donmir. Okay, I think... K20 Cavalry, and then the boost from Retaining Knight is going to be enough for us here, and we'll still have 
one card advantage as well. So this is a really weird match. We have had uh, pretty much the worst possible hand in round one. Marginally better in round two. They will slightly out resilience us here. Can we please get Ragnar? Or a way to get Ragnar? We did. It's not only Ragnar, Royal Decree or Amphibious Assault could have worked as well. Now, this is not terrible when we have Windhelm, but we have all leader ability charges here. Okay, there's... Suddenly, we see all the tutors. Okay, this'll do. We'll start with Windhelm, because he's two points per turn. Then we'll go and we'll get... Technically, you should put him here. Uh, probably. Because then we would have had two cards next to each other, because next turn is going to be Anna Stranger with Renew. Because we don't need this for Ragnar. Okay, uh, you are going to get damage, but we have plenty of shield wall charges remaining. So we can still make do. Okay, try to do this quickly. So we don't waste shield wall charges that we don't need to use here. Okay, Oniro. Next turn, we'll probably Amphibious Assault into, uh, ideally something that gives us numerous... Numerous shielded cards. Namely, oh, well, it's going to be K20 Cavalry then. And we want to boost you. And that last leader ability charge is going to get used on something because I didn't cancel it out quickly enough, but we're going to have anything else unshielded anyway. So, uh, looking good here. We technically don't need to, but we will use Ragnar because that's obviously what the whole deck was about. And after being denied Ragnar round one, round two, you will not deny me of in round three. All right, so going up against Syndicate here. And they'll go first. Okay, so we have Ragnar, but we don't have Renew, so we don't currently have a way to replay him. We have other big engines with Windhelm and an Estranger. We might even prefer to go that route in round one, unless we do see a Renew. Uh, mm, Try getting rid of you. Uh, not a huge fan of that. Because uh, at as of right now, we can only guarantee that we'll play Ragnar once, which is... Not great, we want to, I mean, he's our key win condition, right? So we want to be able to play him on two separate occasions, ideally. Our potential workaround is by relying on our other engines in one of the rounds. And that will probably end up being round one with Windhelm and a Stranger. And do we have a Redanian Knight of Thought of Sauce? Oh, I tried mulliganing one, didn't I? I mean, we can get it with Amphibious Assault. That is still an option. Use a leader ability charge on you to get you inspired right off the bat. And then I think next turn, we played our two point per turn engines. Now we'll go Amphibious Assault into a Redani Knight for a one point per turn engine. Uh, bounties can be a little bit hard to do the damagey stuff if we're loading up on the shields. Also, that's a little bit tempting, but. Uh, well, maybe they realize that because they forfeit. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here, and we'll go first. Okay, so we have Nickers in hand. Let's get rid of him. And we do have a way to get Ragnar. No Renew to get him back, though, so let's see if we can get rid of you and... Dahlia's not bad, but not a huge fan of the Adepts. Okay, so let's start with Engines. I thought I saw, yep, we have Windhelm. So what we might do is, depending on how things are looking, if our Engines, like Anna Stranger, are enough to make it look like we can win round one without using Ragnar, we might try to do that, because as things currently stand, we do not have a way to get him back with Renew. Are they... Mm, log? Question mark? Okay, let's get more engines going here. And it'll probably be Anna Stranger plus Stratagem on her on our next turn, in between these two. Technically, uh, you have more cards in your deck than we do. It's a little weird that you'd be choosing the Adepts for that reason. Okay, Blightmaker, that might be about to change. Now, we may... Hmm, we need to start choosing. Okay, we should maybe get Donomir down here to protect our other engines. They've disrupted one of them. One engine. But we still have double boost here and double boost here. Lost a single boost on the Redanian Knight there. Okay. Feeling relatively okay about round one, but getting Colgrim vibes. Just that a uh, little odd that we have the same number of cards right now. Um, let's throw down the Resilience. 
Might not have needed to play that in round one. Might have potentially used it as a, a throwaway in round two. But I think we will now end this round here because we have a pretty sizable lead. They put a Retaining Knight at the top of our deck. That's not an ideal card for us. And uh, yeah, I it looks kind of like Colgrim deck, but we had the same amount of or almost the same amount of cards in our deck, so it wasn't going to be effective if they did choose to break it out. So not really sure what they were trying to do there. All right, so going up against monsters here, and they'll go first. Okay, so first question is, do we have any way of getting Rogner here? And at the moment, we don't. So we might be relying pretty heavily. Okay, we just did, though. <laughs> I was going to say, we might be relying pretty heavily on Windhelm and Anna Stranger to carry us here, but that no longer needs to be the case. Technically, Windhelm is two points per turn. We don't have... Oh, we do have Renew. Okay, so we could go with uh, Roderick in both rounds. This is going to be a Kelly deck. This is probably going to be a Kelly deck. I am going to go Windhelm first. Two points per turn. I'm going to see if they have an answer for him. And if they don't, then obviously he continues to generate points if they... Okay, it's not a Kelly deck. <laughs> I take it back. It's probably... Okay, we'll just... This gets you boosted there. Once we have another unit, we might consider using a shield wall charge on Anna Stranger to get her inspired. Or we could use Wyvern Scale Shield even. Might do Redanian Knight here and then the... No, don't! I mean, we can probably still make it work. It's a little bit unfortunate. I guess we'll do this. Now you're inspired. You have the shield, so you will contribute toward Rogner. And you will... Boost Roach, it does mean that uh, we might be going Immortal Cavalry over here next to give Anna Stringer another target. Yeah, I think that's probably the plan here. It does mean we're missing out on the uh, additional shield that we would have gotten from uh, playing the shield special card on our previous turn. That's what they're saving up for is the Bloody Mistress. Okay, so this concerns me. I am not sure that we can outscore that. That's a lot of Grinacor's fruits to power that up. It does make me hesitant here. They will continue to score a bunch of points even after passing, as will we. But I think they might be able to outdo us here. Which makes me a little nervous to commit our big stuff. And now I've waited long enough that I can't really risk doing Amphibious Assault into Rogner and potentially getting him played in the wrong row. So uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to be enough. We also didn't get a ton of shields out there. Focus instead on some non-shield-centric engines like Anna Stranger. Okay, let's get rid of some of these Megascopes. Probably at least one, if not possibly even our second one here as well. Okay. Now, they did play one more card than us. We deliberately ended the round a little bit early. Now, the fact that they're going and Drago Larva would suggest that they are, in fact, trying to play more here. I think that uh, we have to assume they are intending to go further, in which case, probably Immortal Cavalry. I mean, we can use uh, Rogner twice because we have the Renew to get him back in round three. So I just didn't really want to commit to the previous round because I was not confident that we could make that work. We might have actually wanted to go Royal Decree into something that could give us an additional copy of Immortal Cavalry. Now, that's not really an option since we've played it from hand. Reinforcements to maximize the shield count. Probably what we're looking for here, unless we're trying to get an engine out of Royal Decree. I'll tell you what, we'll do this. And I'm thinking we'll actually Amphibious Assaults into something other than Rogner. Probably... Should have gone with an engine here, like a Redanian Knight earlier. If she who knows is a problem. That is definitely a problem, because that carryover is going to be an issue. I mean, we can get some carryover ourselves, technically speaking, although I'm not sure we can afford that luxury right now. I think we need to just go for the, the straight-up points here, because they have a lot on the board. And we are going to get some from our finisher, but, uh, but again, the question of, is it going to be sufficient? Because I'm not sure that it will be. Uh, they can consume one of our cards there. I think... Probably looking at Donomir now. Put the shield on you, because you don't have one. So obviously we don't really have anything that we need to protect. I mean, we are kind of protecting this Redanian Knight, but it's mostly just to get another relatively high base power shielded unit down there for when we do eventually play Rogner. Now, okay. It's unfortunate on several levels, but... 
use you. We'll use you. And uh, next turn kind of needs to be Rogner with Royal Decree. Can we really not get Nickers out yet? Wow. Okay, so this might be our chance. I think this might be sufficient. Because they did not push any further. Rogner is, of course, a big finisher for us. It is sufficient. And we still have the means to get him back in round three. The problem is they'll get the carryover from She Who Knows. That's why I was concerned about that last time round. Now, Queen Adalia would have been a good card to go along with the uh, uh, Immortal Cavalry. K20 Cavalry is not bad. We'll use you to create another copy of these guys. Technically, it was already going to have a shield, but yeah, we'll play you as well. What is Amphibious Assault going to give us? Probably another K20 Cavalry. And then this will be for Rogner as our finisher. Now, the question here is, in a short round, who is going to be able to outpace who? So we aren't going to have a ton of shields to power up Rogner, but it will still be something. These guys do get boosted when they lose their shields, so that's also helpful. Not sure they're going to have much time to get up to Sabbath either. So now it's AA into K20 Cavalry and through AA. It does get a decent sized boost here. We might as well apply our last shield ball charge to something. Because uh, everything has a shield. It's mostly just the boost in this case. But want to make sure we have plenty of time here. And it does mean Hengeth Sword is not really going to do much for them. It does remove the shield, which is a little unfortunate. But uh also just need to find you. Okay, there we go. Get your back. We go up to 43 here. What is their finisher? Because I'm not sure it's going to be enough for them. It's Ornate Sensor. No! No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. So there's a look at a Northern Realm Shield Wall deck for the new Battle Rush Seasonal Event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. And make sure to take a look at our new Black Sun Northern Realms card reveal for the legendary card from the upcoming expansion. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.